you don't only want to think about yourself when you think about what the well-being you want to include in your well-being well-being of others that's a very important and significant step in your evolution because you are not just thinking you're like how the pirish was saying you are increasing what yes, you're doing yeah exactly your your uh, awareness, awareness and your responsibility and it's not only towards your family your uh, people that you love but it is a larger responsibility and this is why the word savior was saying is we have to be careful when we define our sphere of influence sometimes we are so narrow in defining our sphere of influence so that is a growth now that very growth also can become what yeah, a hindrance. hindrance why can it become a hindrance because your whole focus moves to what changing the world and you want the things to be what the way you want them to be so you think what is what uh, uh, what the Noble US president cause. should do what the, the environmental people should do what the un should do what the government should do what the ceo should do what ngo should do so you have a program for everyone what they should do and we <laughs> they are not listening to you so therefore that the very thing which is actually a huge significant growth itself will become what your own cocoon you, you it's a larger cocoon but you are still within a cocoon 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 okay i thought it was some sanskrit name no <laughs> the particle in the then what happens is what that you evolve a little bit more and i said okay now by looking and having such a strong agenda for the world which itself is a very noble thing it is a noble thing but it is making me what dissatisfied the the people don't even know of my existence but uh, i know their existence and i am operating from dissatisfied so that means not only it is good to become larger in your goals but you also need to what pay attention to your whole emotional life and the attitudes and feelings and understanding with which you are doing what you are doing which you think is meaningful for you so that means that is what the third level you are moving to the third level then in that third level there is further expansion yeah but in that expansion again it can become what a block how because you can say yeah the only thing i can do in this world is what just do something yeah. where i have what uh, in mind the well-being of others and i take care of them and i also take care of myself not only totally, uh, also emotionally wonderful that means again you create a block then there is what the next thing what is the next thing the next thing is just trying to understand that i'm achieving all of this but am i just uh, operating in a meaningless world or the world is something more than what i understand and that's when i think in ishwara the order of the intelligence within which i am working so that means i am not working in a dumb world i am not working in an inert world i am working in a world which is intelligent and which does put together things called two series of laws of cause and effect so that means again i am what expanding now the last two three verses what it was showing us this is probably the highest expansion even that was called what avidya because then what happens is you still think i am one entity and i am acting within what this huge intelligent world and i am doing what i have to do and the forces will what take care. take care of themselves and produce whatever they have to produce 
and that means I am uh, kind of uh, in sync with that intelligence and that's all, that's all I can do, what else? That is a, the last block. Uh, there is one more reality which I then need to understand. The last block is recognition of Ishwara and aligning with Ishwara. That is wonderful. That is very huge. Compared to this ethical person, that is a huge growth. Lot of expansion. We are talking about if you want to go from your limited individuality to limitless, you can't just jump like that. You need series of expansions. And you need to initiate at every level. Initially, as uh, Rashna was saying, initially it's deliberate. Later on it becomes what? Spontaneous. It becomes your expression. Effortless. So this is what we call more and more expansion and ultimately even that can become a catch. So what the last verse we saw was what? The people who are doing these upasanas. These upasanas are way in different ways in which you bring to your mind the presence of Ishvara and relate to it. So we have prayers but these are not prayers. These are what upasanas. But how is a prayer different from Upasana? <coughs> exactly. See, in a prayer, you can ask for, let's say you can ask for clarity of mind, you can ask for well-being of others, you can ask for whatever you want, whatever is important for you at that point in time. Upasana, you're not asking for anything. What are you doing? You are just seeing the presence of Ishwara. So what I showed you uh, yesterday, that uh, what Surya was doing in yesterday's meditation or is kind of a form of upasana. That you say that the destructive forces are in the galaxy, but the destructive forces are also what? Not the, the creative forces are in the universe, the creative forces are also in the the, between this continuous creation and destruction, there is a seeming stability in the universe and also in me. What you are doing is you are using that knowledge to really understand that I am totally pervaded by what Ishwara. So that means uh, this is not a prayer, it's an upasana. It's changing our orientation. The uh, second way of upasana is, what we saw is, what you take a symbol and that symbol, in that you superimpose what the total. So generally, when we superimpose one thing on the other, it is called what? Subjectivity. Yeah? Instead of seeing one thing, if I see something else, it is called subjectivity. Here, it is not subjectivity, it is deliberate. Why is it not subjectivity? Because your it focus is, is on that. Exactly, it is deliberate. It's not like you are mistaking the stone for something else. Or you see the stone as stone, but you use it as a symbol to represent what? Something, something much, much bigger. bigger. And Surya gave an example of flag and we do it in other, it's Forms. not only this, we do it all the time. So that piece of cloth evokes such emotions in us. Why? Because it represents our nation. I don't know if you, because every time we used to live um, uh, in Thailand for very long years and every time, you know, they have this uh, Independence Day, so that at the embassy they will have what? flag hoisting suddenly. And every time we went, something about it brought tears in our eyes. Every time. It's like the wedding ring. Uh -huh. Absolutely. But some people when the wedding ring get lost, they get married again. Yeah. It's a symbol. It's, it's a symbol. 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 Absolutely. So that means we human beings, we need that. Otherwise, everything, you know, how will you 
relate to Ishvara and just abstract, when you don't actually begin to see whole of Ishvara in everything. You need that. You need that. You will be need to nourish our psyche. Because that is not our orientation when we act with the world. Our orientation is what? I'm different, you're different, we are somehow transacting, negotiating, you are trying to extract your best interest, I'm trying to extract my best interest. This is how all the transactions are. Trying to cut the best deal. Trying to cut the best deal. And this is not how it is. So that means you have to, how will you do it unless you do deliberate attempt. So this is what we call Upasana. You make, you train, I mean you, you train the mind to do that. And over a period of time it will become more spontaneous. So therefore, uh, this is what we call, now those very things which are so noble, they themselves can become what, a, a kind of a, a block. Where, because these Upasanas will bless you, it will give you plenty, it will give you abundance, it will give you, uh, you know, a lot of privileges. And the privileges are not only on this earth. What they talk about privileges is what? Have better and better bodies, go to better and better locals, have better and better experiences. And it is so what? Gratifying. So that very gratification becomes what? Another block. Another block. So this is where the ultimate is what to know your identity with this Ishvara. So that means when you have done all this sufficiently, Ishvara blesses you with one more what, knowledge. And that is essentially there is no difference between Ishvara and you. So that is what uh, was uh, uh, said. Now in order, now look at this. In order to get there, you have to do so all awesome. this, but at the same time, not get not stuck, stuck anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a tricky thing. Because the mind is, the minute you start having some positive uh, effect, you, you'll get stuck there. Yeah. But when, uh, just, uh, uh, when you're climbing yes. ladders, yes. why this happen? Because you don't have a fixed goal. If you have a goal, it gives you a direction. Like Robert was left, the goal is there. That's so true. He's going to take straight there. I now, what happens to the mind when the mind is not in control? While going to the airport, you see a good street, so there will be a diversion. And that diversion again brings you after two years to the video. See, uh, you are, what you are saying, I will kind of say it um, in a real life situation. And I will be totally honest. See, what generally happens is when you define, let's say somebody who has come to Veda, for example, and that person does see what, what, what Vedanta is trying to say that you need to have your self-knowledge and all that. But if the person has not sufficiently nourished oneself, so this happens so very often. Also no, one second. One second, just one second, because it is so true, it's a reality. That's why I'm saying. So that means, let's say people who have done, let's say, three and a half year course and they have dedicated to knowing this final truth. Then, after they graduate, it seems to them as though what, this is what I want in life, I'm totally clear, my goals are very clear, I have invested in them and I'm going to pursue it. Now what happens is, imagine, somewhere along the line, yeah, if you are not nourished, and this is what Swamiji kept telling us, yeah? if you are not nourished, then that lack of nourishment keeps on manifesting in some ways. One of the ways in which it manifests is, if you take up, let's say for example, sannyasa, and you take up the role of a teacher, then there is some what script to follow. To follow. If you choose to do it, now, what then happens is, if they are not nourished in a certain way, then if they find sometimes students, what will happen? Relationships develop. You know, well, I agree. So that means even though the goal is clear, 
So still, what will happen? Diversions. Diversions will take place. And then, if you are not feeling uh, the, the, the very, uh, uh, you know, uh, your whole thing will be, what well, I'm starting Vedanta class, so what is the purpose of my class? I want to have 300 students. That is not the purpose. The purpose is not to have what? 200 or 300 or 500 or 1000 students. The purpose is what? You lose sight. It's so easy to lose sight. In the noblest things that we do, we convert this very activity into something so, so uh, mundane. mundane. Exactly. That's the word, mundane. That is a normal orientation of people. I, I claim to be what? In a, a different, uh, operating from a, diff, uh, a different wisdom. But my mind is still operating like what? Everybody else. I want more people. I want more resources. So the whole the goal becomes get gather more people and have more resources. I lose sight without even realizing it. Consciously, I'm still pursuing what is highest and I'm sharing knowledge. But my inner thing is complete. I don't even recognize that division. So therefore, it requires, I tell you, a lot and a lot and a lot of grace to detect all these tendencies and to be free from. It's not easy. You see it again and again and again. So you get blocked and you can get blocked. So therefore, this next verse 15 is what asking for help. Asking for help to whom? Lord Sat. Lord? Sat. Why do we ask uh, help from Lord Sat? Clarity, the light. It's a symbol of light. It's, a, I mean, the, one of the best things is the sun. You yeah. know, there's no world. Absolutely. So that means, the, witness to everything. as far as uh, our, uh, uh, what, from what I can see, the great, greatest blessing is what? The sun. Greatest blessing. Why is it the greatest blessing? As he says, without sun, there is no life. Yeah. All the water will be frozen and uh, the temperature you want to be. Absolutely. So that means you ask, uh, uh, you know, for blessings to uh, for uh, to an entity which is already blessing you so much by its presence. So. It, all, it does what it already does the job of keeping you alive and quietly. It, and quietly. It is already doing a job of what making ocean water water into a portable water. It's already doing a job of what creating this plant, giving the energy to this plant which is giving us all the nutrients that we need. The world sustains this requirement. So that means to this giver who is already blessing us in so many different ways, we are asking for its blessing in one more way. What is one more way? To give us that clear my mind. Insight for to know each other. Exactly. Insight wherein I do what needs to be done for that final knowledge and at the same time God not get stuck at any given level. Because it's so easy for the mind to go on a tangent without us ever realizing it. You learn from son that he's without any money, without anything, he's keep, <laughs> keep, no, keep giving this brilliance for many millions of years. Absolutely. Nobody will say thank you to it. Absolutely. Not only really as asking. asking. Without us asking. Without us asking. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Yeah. Because we the said it together. Without uh, us yeah. asking. Yeah. See, with uh, this, the, the light that produces all this is a physical light. But the sun also represents what? The light which removes darkness, darkness of ignorance. Yeah. 
because the, there is one which is what physical darkness, the other one is darkness of ignorance. So that means the very sun who has been removing the physical darkness, we are asking for that sun to remove our ignorance. darkness of ignorance. Not only we are just grateful, see, one, we are grateful is one step, asking for removing our ignorance at the mental level in so many levels is another thing. There's a special prayer for that. Okay? Then this is yeah. So it's a beautiful, I tell you, this Upanishad which is, is all about Ishwara. She knows it. I, I do it and, which know, is that? She's prayer? reading it now. So right? that oh, here he says, Hiranya Mayena Patrena Satyasya Apihitam Mukham Tattvam Pusha Na Bruno Satya Dharmaya Drishtai. So beautiful. This psalm he says, you take me what Satya Dharma, you nourish me by what taking me to what the, the, the light of knowledge all the way. Let me not stop somewhere and get stuck on the way. And even if I do open up those venues where I can see that I'm stuck and what bring myself back onto on this track. What is that morning prayer we do for the sun? That is the Gayatri Mantra. Gayatri Mantra. The Gayatri Mantra that we do also has simpler meaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the Gayatri Mantra, do you all know the meaning of Gayatri Mantra? I think most of You had sent me that because yeah. I say that prayer uh, now. Because one day we were doing it at Chilim and then I asked you. Uh, yeah. Yes. The Gayatri Mantra. Yeah. So uh, you know the meaning of Gayatri Mantra? Gayatri Mantra. So I'll just briefly explain. Almost the whole thing I've already explained to this prayer. So Om is the name of that intelligence which pervades the whole universe. And pervades the whole universe means what is whole universe. So it says Bhuhu, Bhuvaha, Suvaha. Bhuhu means the earth, Suvaha means the heavens. And they, uh, 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 Bhuhu, Bhuvaha is Antariksha. Antariksha means what is between the earth and the heavens, everything. So it pervades everything. Now that intelligence which pervades everything, what is the concrete form of that intelligence which is intimately known to be? Bhargaha Devaha. Deva, that is what the sun. The sun is a direct, I can see if, if, if somebody contends that they, what is this intelligence? that you are talking about, you can always give an example of the sun and make them see how the presence of the sun has so many different functions with reference to my life. So that means it is a representation. It's something that I can see which is, it represents the all intelligence which is in the entire universe. Now, Bhargaha Devaha Dhimahi. Dhimahi means we are all propitiating you. Propitiating you, that means uh, Dhimahi is a verb and it is a plural verb. What does it mean? I pray, but I am using plural. What does it mean? That everybody. I am including everybody. everybody. We. We all. We. I am not saying I am propitiating you, I am including others. So in case if you are not doing it, I am also doing it for you. <coughs> So what are we asking? Already they are ble it's blessing us for so many things. What what now do you what do you want what do you want from it? It says what Thiyaha Naha Prachodaya. Thiyaha means our minds. Naha means it's please don't chant na because na means please don't light up my mind. It's a naha means our our minds be what led in the right directions. Prachodaya, light them up so that they are led in the right direction. Because as I told you, it's so easy to get caught somewhere. The, 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 you get, see, the, the, the catch is because the more you evolve, more the rewards will come. 
as more rewards come, you become what? Yeah, happy with happy those yeah. rewards. Along the reward responsibility. Yeah, and then you have to evolve, responsibility to evolve. So therefore, this is exactly this verse. Because this whole journey is not an easy journey. It's not as easy as saying, okay, it's true. What Viresh said is so true that most of us, we don't even have any goal in life. What is a goal? Go to school, have a nice job, get, get married. married, have kids, have grandkids, and that's it. Happy family. So in that, exactly, happy <laughs> family, that's a goal. In that goal, what? Uh, what such a drama will happen by the time all this happens? Yeah. This is full of drama, and you get so caught in the drama and what the heaviness of the drama that you are sunk. Exactly. Not only you suffer, but you make others suffer too. So that means. Identifying goal of one's life is a huge step in the journey of a jiva. Huge step. This is why when somebody comes to Vedanta, it's not at all about just joining some class. It's not about joining an art class or joining a yoga class or joining I don't know what. You're changing the whole trajectory of your journey in this universe. That is a huge event. And the person and the tradition which helps you to do that journey, you have to have what is it. Only then it will what? Bless you. So therefore, this is what starting a totally new Life on a different side. Having identified the goal, still there are catches. Still you can get stuck. It's not just enough to identify the goal. To finish the journey is still we saw so many what potential uh, blocks that or tangents <coughs> on which we can go. And you have to stay on, on the uh, track in order to reach the highest that can be reached and that is what? What is the highest that can be reached in this universe? Our teacher used to say, can anybody better limitlessness? Freedom and limitlessness. Freedom and limitlessness and that is also your nature, not somebody else's nature. And you have to pray to that, uh, the, that entity uh, and then you are constantly small. If nobody can be said, you have to understand. People say, oh, so many people are here talking about so many things. So who should I go to? So Swamiji said, just think about it. Who can better uh, this vision? Who can better the vision of limitlessness? Ask yourself that. Whole attraction of uh, uh, going here and going there and listening to this and listening to that will go away. The second thing is, if the person says that I am limitless, but if you follow me, I will make you limitless, then what? It's again a catch. Yeah, because you are Exactly. You live yourself this by is a yourself. Typical example of what somebody trying to control you. So therefore, this is one vision which not only talks about limitlessness, but it talks about what you are already limitless. That's why it's a it very nice yeah. You can better you. You can better. Unless you, this is a fire within, your, within yourself and you understand that properly and you develop that understanding and you are able to change it, then only you can do that. 
I think even if people have understood the full vision, they have to make little corrections sometimes. Can you somehow little fall off, you know, fall off the cart and then you can realize I'm getting blocked here and align yourself? Would that happen when someone who has really understood it? Still it happens to them? Okay, okay. so I'll just come to that. Yeah, that's a good question. So, uh, mm -hmm. Here, what we are doing is, so therefore, there are so many people who promise you and then you have to choose because the spiritual world is also full of many, many different options. So you will not be swerved if you know that this vision cannot be better for two reasons. One is you can't improve on limitlessness and also that limitlessness you already are. It's not a promise of limitlessness in the future as a result of you following somebody. So that means the whole teaching is what removing ignorance at all these different levels for you to own up and to be in touch with what your true nature. So the teaching is all the time empowering. The minute you give up your ignorance, you are more connected. Then you are more connected. Then you are more connected. And you have expansion and expansion and expansion until what you discover your totally, your true nature. So that means all the way the teaching is empowering. There is nothing about control. There is, if a teacher uses the relationship of a teacher and student to control, the teacher has a long way to go. You will drop the teacher also and find more wording. Absolutely. The board, Absolutely. Everything that is process. so true. There is a Dakshina Murti Stutra which explains this idea. It explains this idea. And next year I think we will do that Dakshina Murti. That's amazing. It's beautiful. Explain, expresses this idea. So that means that uh, that uh, you have to use it empowerment, empowerment, empowerment till discovery. No ounce of control, no ounce of what imposing ideas, no ounce of there is none of that. This is why there is only in this if there is a true teacher who has really understood. This is the only relationship that actually the teacher doesn't need anything from the student. This is the most. This is where our teacher comes. This is the only teacher who can teach that. Very good. The only, this is the only, in every other relationship there is what? Give and take. How much is that? You give and you take. You give and you take. In this relationship, the teacher has n actually nothing to take from you. Uh, the entire process is over. He's unfolding your wheel of ignorance. That's the that challenge. means you only take. And the teacher gives what like the sun unconditionally. No, no, uh, what? Agenda. No agenda. Zero agenda. Therefore, and then our teacher needs to say, what a price you will pay for this knowledge? What is an adequate price for this knowledge which takes, to, takes you to your own limitlessness? And not just a vague idea of limitlessness, but shows you the whole way and helps you all the way to make sure that you don't get stuck anywhere. What, what will you give that person you never can. You never can. So therefore, the teacher, our teacher used to say, you never can pay me. What are you going to give her? Yeah. Million dollars? What is million dollars compared to limitlessness? Hey, you don't even realize. Yeah, if you're counting in thousands, you don't even realize what you're doing. He says, but you can always pay me back. How? Pass this knowledge on to other people. That is the only possible 
got repayment to the tradition. From whom I have received, you can never pay the tea. Whatever you give, it's not enough. But you can pay back to the tradition in your own way. By what? Being the person who then what? Passes, passes it on to us. future generations. And you are always indebted to the tradition. Not only to the teacher, but also to the tradition, the part of whom is your teacher. Thank you. <laughs> so therefore, this is how the whole, the attitude with which when the one has to receive the knowledge and give knowledge. So this is what what uh, uh, Viresh was talking about. But he was talking about with reference to love. He says you have to learn to give and you have to learn to receive. receive. In this knowledge, it's also the same. You need to have the infrastructure to receive the knowledge. Otherwise, you can have a genius standing in front of you, but your mind is not ready. And you also have to learn to what? Give back. You may not be able to give back to that same person, but you have to give back what? Somewhere else. And this is why I love when. Um, he said yesterday, he says, I would if I can do something where I can share this knowledge with the people who are already thinking about doing good things for the world. If they have this as the basis of their interaction with the world, I tell you, and you have few of them, it is just, it is just amazing. I can't even imagine what kind of a multiplying effect it will have. I'm going to help you take this to the United Nations. That is so nice. It's also written. It's also written. Something you have to do. Yes. So that means this is how and this is how the movie. And therefore, the prayer is for what? Let me, if I have this treasure. The, the, the extent to which I can extract from the treasure is what? Where I'm operating from. So I'm to expand and expand so that I can what, make the full use of the treasure. And you're asking for the son's help to remove all ignorance so you can receive this what to the fullest extent that is possible. To prepare you. This is the verse. Then, what is the next verse? 16. Pushanna karshe yama surya prajapatya vyuma rashmi samuha tejo yate rupam kalyana tamam tate pashyami yo avasau purushaha sa aha asmi. So here he is saying that if you are actually going to remove my ignorance and you are going to help me, then till where I have to go? It says, till I go to what the highest which is to what to understand the truth of myself. So you can say you remove my ignorance, but then you have to define till when. So in this verse, you define, you remove my ignorance and ignorance and ignorance and ignorance till what? Till I know the truth of mine. Now, let us come back to Rashna's question. And Rashna's question was, imagine if the person has what? Removed yeah. ignorance at every level and then really finally understands the reality, not Superficially, oh, I understand something, some slogans that we have mugged up and said, oh, yeah, yeah, it's all the same. It's not about that. So that means, that if the person has really understood, then her question is, what does the person... Can you slip up sometimes? You can slip up. Okay. So this is an interesting question. Can you then slip up? So, um, let's first look at the, the traditional answer, then I will give you my answer. No. Can you just clarify the meaning of sleep up? Okay, a sleep up, ah, yeah. let her ask, let her clarify because it's her question. What do you mean? A slip up would mean like a sudden block would come, you know, without, you, you sort of go 
back into that little round blocks which she was talking about. It would happen in you that get emotion that you might sort of suddenly feel something. Even though you realize that emotions are sometimes so strong, I think it could come in the way, but I'm not sure the service is going to do. A slip up would be like a mistake, uh, not a mistake, uh, a setback. Set on the road and you slip and the a setback, like a setback. So you, you're on your way, but then something and happens, you reach, and you fall back or have a setback. You well, you make a mistake. Up, if you set back, why is it called a setback? Oh, back? that's the English language. Uh, uh, it is yeah, one of the... It's uh, uh, just like you can use it also like a slip. You know, slip back. So you're off the path. Yeah, yeah. 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 correct. Yeah, I've Tradition. If I look uh, the, the, the use the tradition, it has uh, answer. It uh, um, and the person who really knows, not the one who is just like kind of yeah, I'm whole, I'm whole. It's not like that. The person who does that. There are the, the, the person of two types. One is what we call Brahma Vet, and the other one is Brahma Nishta. Make a distinction. Brahma Vet means the knower of Brahman and Brahmanishta is the one who is well established in Brahman. So even after knowing what happens at the level of mind, what you can always fine tune it what more and more and more. The example that I gave the other day is what we call the fine tuning of the mind. The generally, how do we generally operate? If this person is telling the truth, I will try to help him. If this person is not telling the truth, I will not help him. This is how 99.9% .9 of the people will think. Oh, but even from that, you can move to one more level. And you can tell yourself that, hey, even if this person is lying, I'm going to help. Because I want to send him a message then what? In spite of my knowing, I'm still helping you because if I just told you no and you're lying, then what? You will remain the same. But if somehow I can convey to you that I know it and I still am doing it, then what? It will make you reflect. It will make you reflect and it will be an impetus for you to change. So that means, what are you doing? You're already aligned. It's not like you're not alive. What are you doing? Even what subtler levels of engaging with the universe. So that means you can always do that. You will see that you're way of at that stage. That's it. But, but you're not. You're actually operating at another level altogether. It would seem like, and then an onlooker he says, yeah, why is he doing this? So if you don't have a well-developed mind, you only say that you just criticize it and say, yeah, he's not even, he's helping all the, what, people who don't deserve it. That's how most of the people operate. And that's why he doesn't even do it with reference to everyone else. Only when he thinks that you're ready for receiving that one more level, he will, what, engage with you and show you. He is very selective in who, what he, because the person has to be communicated depending upon where that person is and taken at the next level. You are ready for what? Huh? You are ready. You are ready, that's why I am telling you the story. He is always knows. Exactly. So therefore, this is what we say, you can always find you. That's why you cannot be complacent and say, no, I've got it all. It's true that you got it all and you're very grateful, but you're constantly striving to what, improve your nature of engagement with the world. It's very necessary. So therefore, that is what we call moving from Brahma Vith to Brahma Nishta. is the highest. It's so well established that it, it is equivalent to um, uh, Surya saying this morning, I loved what he said, but he used this example 
of Akhilati Mama Rudanye Ra. The, the translation of that is, in my heart, what Rama explains. It's a very famous song. Lord Rama is playing in my heart. So my heart is not just <coughs> some uh, blood that pops in this. That Rama is playing there. So first you can say that I am uh, there and Rama is what? That intelligence which provides nourishment to all my what? All the, the cells so that they become heart cells and all the arteries so that it is able to pump the blood and everything. That is the first level of understanding. The sec in, in this level of understanding, there are how many entities? Two. two. There are two entities. One is you and the other one is what? Ishvara. So then he says, first level is, before first you operated only as individual. You had no sight of Ishvara. Now, what you are bringing in the understanding of Ishvara and you are saying there is me and there is Ishvara. Then it has to move further and he says that what more and more you have to, uh, these are all the things that our teacher taught us. So he said that whenever you interact with the world, there is your version of the world and there is what? The reality. Yeah. So that means when you operate from your version of the world, you are operating from what he called Jiva Srishti. What is Jiva Srishti? It is a creation which is of, uh, uh, of my understanding. He says more and more to mature, you operate what? Not from Jiva Srishti, but Ishvara Srishti. That means you try to see the totality of things and then do what you need to do intelligently. You don't only operate from what? Your will, your understanding. You little bit merge yourself into what? The total. Later on, he says, at one point in your evolution, it is only Ishvara Srishti. There is no Jiva Srishti anymore. That means at that point in time, you see yourself as what the instrument through which Ishvara expresses itself. You have no agenda left of your own. If you have no agenda, if you have no coloring, if you have no ignorance, then you become what? The instrument through which Ishvara operates. This is the highest. It is only Ishvara Srishti and Jiva is only an expression of that Ishvara. Can I do it with this and that? Yeah, you just do what you have to do. All the personal agendas are gone. So you need to function at order of so, reality. Yeah. And that is a dharma. Right? That is exactly. So that means this is what we call the evolution. This is how far we have to go. And that once that whole process is over, it is what we call what? Brahmanishma. There is only Ishwara left. So therefore, so yes, exactly. The awareness is my nature and then there is Ishvara, Ishvara which is the design everywhere. and this form mm -hmm. has taken up all the angularities where Ishvara can flow. And all the biases. You have a question? Yeah. Uh, Claire has a question. No, I have a reaction. Claire was telling me something else. Uh -huh. Is it awareness or is it consciousness? Okay, awareness and consciousness are both synonyms for the Sanskrit word chit. So, so what, I, my understanding in English is different. 
Ah, see, yeah, exactly. See, because see, any time whether you use the word awareness or you use the word consciousness, it will only have on a limited use. Because we only operate with creative language from our, our limited understanding of things. So every word will have only limited meaning. So we have to use the known words and we have to take out what the limitations which are uh, 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 the connotations of that word. That's why uh, it's, it's very, very true. Both when I say I have consciousness, generally that word consciousness we use with reference to what I'm conscious. So that means that I'm unconscious. That means what I'm, my not, mind is not even aware. Not, not uh, so. Yeah. All you can say I'm conscious about issues. So what is that? What is that meaning? That I'm aware of certain issues which others are not. Awareness is exactly the same. When we generally use the word awareness in a common parlance, what do we mean? Similar. It's a bigger vision that you look at. I'm aware of everything around me here. So it expands it differently. That's how I look at consciousness and awareness. So no, I look at that. Really? Ask what is your... Because um, if I look at the equation between Atma and Brahma, yes. consciousness can be in both. Yes. I can't say the same with my understanding of the English word awareness. Oh, I see. Okay. So, uh, why? Because there has to be an object for awareness. Okay. So, the same That's thing. For my understanding. Yeah, that is good. Okay. See, what um, our teacher used to use the word consciousness, and he also ran into problem with consciousness. So, then what he used to do is, he used to interchange. He used to use consciousness, he used to use awareness, he used to... But in both cases, whether you use the word consciousness or you use the word awareness, you can't use it in a normal sense. The normal sense will only mean something which is one property of the mind. I'm conscious of things. You know, when, when the mind is in coma, you say if the person is unconscious. So that means our normal usage of the word is always with reference to the mind. And what Vedanta is doing is using the same word but showing it is not a property of the mind but it is what something because of which the changing conditions of the mind are. In fact, that's where I'm differing a little bit and reacting therefore. Yes. Uh, because in English, yes. consciousness can describe it's not the case for awareness. Okay. okay, so then, uh, see the thing is, uh, what is conveyed is chit. If for chit, what is more appropriate word if you think that consciousness is, which is true. See, the, the thing is that what you are saying is in some ways true also. Because uh, Ishwara does not have a mind, one mind. So that means that it doesn't have an awareness of something, true. But same thing can also apply with reference to consciousness. You can be conscious of something, but when we are talking about Ishwara, we are not talking about what being consciousness of, conscious of something. Both are what we call transitive verbs. Transitive verb, I'm conscious of what, aware of what. Both can be, you know. So that means... Uh, I was coming from the perspective of who is aware. Who is aware, exactly. So that means that uh, even Ishwara, which is the intelligence, that there is a, a kind of a um, final reality because of which, uh, you know, that the all intelligence or that little intelligence can operate and that final reality is free from. That is what we are trying to convey. And it is propertyless. You sometimes describe it as big, the common. Yeah, so limitlessly big. Yeah. And without any attributes. And it is not, see, the, the minute you say that it is aware of something, then it becomes an entity. So we are not talking about entity, we are talking about the content. 
So Atma and Brahman are also the same uh, words, right? Uh, it depends upon how you are using the word Atma. No, in the sense of awareness, consciousness, limitless, Atma, Brahman, they are all saying the same. Yeah, because that uh, awareness or consciousness, uh, however you define it, it is not to be understood as some something external, something very big that permeates everything. It is our true nature. So therefore, the whole teaching is Atma is so we start with Atma. What is Atma? Atma only means I. Yes, sir. So you are taken from your understanding of Atma to the reality of Atma. Which is everyone. So you can't use that reality of Atma and still continue to think I am and superimpose it on your individuality. That is delusion. So Atma has to convert it into a matter of reality higher level. Need to move to that. Because everything can be merged into one. Exactly. In the end, there is no, no second. So we start with where you are, and then we take you to where the Upanishads want to you to go. So and Satyam is same as awareness and consciousness. No, the Satyam word means uh, the existence. See, the, the existence, generally we uh, talk about existence which is in time. This is the existence which is what the truth of time. And therefore, this existence which is awareness and that is limitless. That is satyam, jnana. So Anand. all these words are not interchangeable. They are not interchangeable. In the sense that they all have, see every specific word meaning. has a specific meaning. So in terms of words yes. and Sanskrit words. Yes. Yes. That means of Sat Chit. Exactly. So, so Atma is Sat Chit. Exactly. So Chit stands for this awareness of consciousness, which is not a consciousness of a given thing. There is nothing personal about it. And that consciousness is existent. But that existence is not within time and space. It is a very truth of time and space. That is the meaning of Sat. And because it is truth of time and space and it is all pervading and the relationship that it enjoys with the world is that of Satyam and Mithya, therefore it is limitless, Anandam. So that whole thing, each word is used very specifically to convey something very specific. Limitless is what? Anandam. 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 Satyam, Nanam, Anandam, Dhamma. This is uh, in the Taitriya Upanishad. But uh, in uh, other uh, Prakarana Grantha, it is explained as Sanchit Ananda. Now there is a whole big discussion, which I don't have time for, but I can tell you tomorrow, that why the word Ananda is what limitless, is used as Ananda. Ananda is? Less pure. So, uh, happiness. So this happiness, People think it cannot be a normal happiness when you come to know this limitless Atma. So they call it what? Bliss. And that is a huge trap for you to go on the tangent. Mm. Because then what happens is you are <laughs> expecting your whole state of mind to be what? In a state of bliss. So that is experiential. So then it becomes, the whole thing becomes what? manipulating your mind to be in a given state where it has no other experience other than the bliss. That is a mistake. But, yeah, go ahead. but why that word is used, there is a reason. And that reason, I don't know if I have the time, but mm -hmm. I will do it later. But it's very easy to understand. There is a river. Let's say river is Ganges and the river meets the ocean. Mm -hmm. The river loses the identity. Yes. And parts of open order of bigger reality. Yes. It merges with exactly. the Exactly. Yes. It leaves the name. That is not yes. exactly the order of reality. Absolutely. The river meets the ocean. It is. You drop your identity and you merge with the self. Mm -hmm. You 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 uh, you operate as the ocean and that is so true. And this it's is a why bigger, much bigger thing. This is why they say that that person becomes an instrument. This is why, see, even though the, the whole teaching is 
nothing to do about Guru, but Guru is an instrument used by Ishwara. Yeah. Ishwara. Yeah. That's why but the whole thing there is reverence. Yeah. But unfortunately, the, the teacher is not, uh, you know, can't take you up those steps. Yeah, the processes. <laughs> himself or herself is not nourished. Everything goes haywire. Yeah. You have to go through that those processes. Is, but true student is in the search of something. Yeah. Sorry. Absolutely. Always. So that means, uh, that's why you don't need to take burden for anything. If every teacher gets what the students that he or she deserves, and every student gets what the teacher that he or she deserves. It's got nothing to do. I didn't come and select you and you and you. It was arranged. Also didn't even know of my existence. Somehow, what? It so happened. What all happened? It all just happens. So therefore, you don't need to worry about anything. This is why you have to live from not this little individual. I want more people. I want to have more. You just twenty-five people in your life. Absolutely. 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 Uh, you, we just have this infrastructure, so we convert all these big ideas from our little infrastructure. We don't, we can't move forward. So, if I want to explain, I can give you an example. There is a room yes. which is very dark for 100 years. Yes. And every day a person coming in the room and he is taking a knock of the furniture. Because when he's entering, and he doesn't know it's a darkness. So when he's going and sitting, he's hitting the furniture. So what this person does in the world when he starts living, he reorganizing the furniture all the We need to be in this without the knowledge. The light. And you put the light on, you see everything clearly. And to have a goal, and to remove the wheel of ignorance, to find your own self, because you're already free. You have to call that self. I know, it's very envious. Really good thing. So, here he says that, yeah, I take my ignorance till when, till what I understand, what Asav Purushaha Ahamasmi. That Purushaha, which is what, that, that, that the presence, that consciousness, or that awareness which pervades everything is not something remote from me. It is my true nature. So this is what he is specifying. Okay. Then he um, he says uh, once that whole understanding is over, he the person says vayu anilam amrutam athaidam vasmatam shariram. Om Krataha Smaraha Krutam Smaraha Krataha Smara Krutam Smara Okay, this is just beautiful. It says that now that the body and mind is given to me to figure out what this reality is. Now that it is done, then after this body goes, what he is saying, what uh, that let my prana merge into what the whole so, samashti. The whole individuality is what. You become part of bigger entity. Absolutely, you become part of that much bigger entity because as long as your body and mind is alive, till then what that becomes an instrument for what Ishvara do. But once this body and mind drops, then what? There is no coming back. So what not coming back is expressed in such a beautiful way. The person is praying to Ishvara and saying, let my prana, let, let it merge into what? The universe. The universe. It says, that, uh, in the, uh, okay, uh, 
so and uh, uh, when my body is uh, reduced to ashes, let it go back to what? The earth. earth. And my mind, uh, which has figured it out, merged with what? The universe. The universe. The uh, Hiranyakar is what sure. the entire subtle universe, uh, the intelligence which what? manifests in the subtle universe. So that means the whole li living life as an entity, that the whole thing. Vyashti is what totally merging with Samashti. So that means that uh, Vyashti is what the individual and Samashti is what the total. So at every level, there's this, this physical body is called what Vyashti, the individual. And the entire physical world is called what? Samashti. So your physical body is part of what? The entire physical world. And still it is what? Separate. Because it's only one and it's not everything else. If you come to know the reality, what will happen? You will no longer take another physical body to experience the world what? It is one of the entities in the total. You just totally got merge with merge. It. Become the total. So that means, and your mind also merges with what? The total subtle Hiranyakata. So your mind is only one mind, which is Vyashti, and Samashti is what? Hiranyakata. So you are saying you merge with it. And then, what your causal is all gone. The causes which give you different different words. There are no longer any causes left because you no longer think of yourself as an individual. You think of yourself as one Satchit Ananda. What is the so, meaning here of uh, me you remember the time what meditation you did? Yeah. Or of I remember all karmas which you did done Yeah. So that means the whole individuality, yeah, which is what all the karmas which are done by me all the preparations which are done by me that culminated into what? My knowing this reality. Now there is no, I don't need to remember because the whole faculty is gone. Who will, uh, in whom it is all stored? Ishwara. Ishwara. Can I put it slightly differently? Yeah. I mean in the same line, briefly. Yeah. The way I see it is that at the time of death, what is the attitude or which what, what is the, the the attitude with which this person who, who knows yes. goes? So he is telling himself this body now which has been so helpful for me to conduct my life and do things and help me move everywhere. This mind which has helped me to get more and more refined and grow and get to understand that. This prana which has helped me sustain all these years to reach to this final goal for which it was meant to. So to all this which I consider to be me, now I am expressing, you have done now your job. And you have, a, let's say, a kind of reverence, a kind of gratitude. All this was given to me. And now that I have accomplished what needed to be accomplished, let it go. Anyway, it's not me. The person I already understood that it is not him. But he's acknowledging from the standpoint of this jiva what is happening. And then he is totally letting go. In fact, he already knows, or she, that, I mean, this body is not him. But he acknowledges how the body, mind, and everything, all these experiences, all this doing, all these hours of meditation, or going to classes, have helped him all the way. So it's a, it's a beautiful, that's yeah, a way it's, really it's a beautiful. You, you see that? <clears throat> yeah, so, yeah, I think what Surya is saying is absolutely right. See, in uh, Katopanishad, yeah. uh, what you are what told is, body is given to you to finish the journey. And what is the journey? Discovering your own limitlessness and removing all the ignorance. The 
mind is given to you for what? The same journey. The senses are given to you for the same journey. The pranas are given to you for that journey. Now when the journey is over, this vehicle uses what? Nothing. Now it's done, it's job. It was programmed with the possibility to accomplish the highest. It has already accomplished the highest. It has served its purpose. When it has served its purpose, what you thank them. It's not the, the whole uh, teaching is not about I'm not the body, I'm not the mind. This is like a simplistic teaching. It's stupid to think like that. The whole teaching is about I'm much more than that, but I'm given the body, given the mind to discover that reality. So it is this body and mind is the greatest gift of the universe to me through which I can discover what my limitlessness. And you thank the body and mind for helping you in that journey of what discovering limitlessness. And you say, I have completed my journey, so thank you for what accompanying me in my journey and making it possible. So you are saying that the realized person is in the journey. And if it's not realized, both in the way. And what happened to the spirit in this? So that, that uh, the awareness, see, that there are. Finished. Finish. So, so that means, see, we don't talk, there is no equivalent of soul in Sanskrit. See, we talk about three things. We talk about sthula sharira, which is what? The body. physical body. The uh, sukshma sharira, which is what? The subtle body. And the cause of karana sharira. So what is karma and sharira? All your karmas which keep giving you different different words. So all three when you understand are not and are this awareness, then they have served their purpose. They all go back and only awareness which is limitless it remains. There is no desire, there is no there is no. Because it's a realized soul. It's a yeah. What do you call the cause of karma? Karma and sharira. Karma. So, Abhnehe Naya Supatha Raye Asli Nishwani Deva Vayunani Nitwan Yuyotva Juhunanam Guyishtam Ne Nama Uptim Vithe. So, here he again what salutes all the Devatas for making that journey possible. It says, O Fire Devata, may you lead us through the good path to experience the result of all our karmas and meditations. May you destroy our bad karmas. We offer unto you the words of salutation. So that means, now it is coming back to what? In order to reach that limitlessness, where is the beginning of the journey for the next person? Where do you start the journey? First verse. <laughs> exactly. The first verse. You have now finished, but the whole teaching tradition is what to continue this go on tradition. And for the other receiver, where has it, has it uh, has to start? It has to start with the first verse, which is what? Ishwaran's presence and aligning your actions to that. That is the starting of the journey. Knowledge to continue. Knowledge to continue. So that means this is a beautiful Upanishad. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is an amazing Upanishad. Everything is revolved around. It's called Isha Vasya Upanishad. That was Rashna's first question. Why is it called Isha Vasya Upanishad? It's all about Isha. Because it is all about Isha. Isha. Shwara. And the first uh, sentence the is Isha Vasya Upanishad. And that, that uh, Starting from the recognition of the presence of Ishwara to the whole and how it helps us in our whole growth process and how it then culminates into what? Can you define this so I can note it down? What? Isha Vasya Upanishad. Yeah. So Isha Vasya Upanishad means the Upanishad, as I told you, yeah. uh, it is what the uh, Upa is what? Something which is near to you. 
Now, what is near to you is a relative term. So that means, with reference to this uh, India, what this Karnataka okay. is near right now. Near. So that means, with reference to Karnataka, this resort is near. So that means it really depends. Near is what? It depends upon what the yeah, reference. Yeah. One thing which is not a relative term, but it is an absolute term, is what? What is the most near to you? Yourself. There is nothing which can be closer to you than yourself. So that means it's not a relative, but it's an absolute term. So upa indicates what? Something which is yeah, near to you. Now, if something which is near to you for everyone is I. Now, if you totally knew the nature of I, there is what? No problem. But here it is saying is, we know we are, but our identity is what? A little bit mixed up. So here he says, Upanishad is what? It is giving you Nishchayatmika Nishchayatmika Jnana It gives you a clear understanding about what? Yourself Self. So Ni is Upa Ni So it is a book which gives you clear understanding of yourself. yourself What does it do? So what? Whether I understand myself clearly or not What difference does it make in my life? So there is a last word Sat if you understand yourself clearly, then it is what all your, it will get rid of what all your suffering. Suffering. It, it will uh, not only make, uh, get rid of your suffering, a lot of things that we do helps us to what, get rid of our suffering, but it is only what, temporary. So it comes back again. The second meaning of Sadhatu is it totally disintegrates. The suffering never comes back. And the third thing is it makes you gain. Gain what? Fulfillment. Because your real fulfillment can only come when you discover your true nature as what? Fullness. Otherwise, the puzzle of life is not completely solved. So, this is what we call Upanishad. In that journey of discovering the true nature of yourself, what is critical? Isha. Isha, if you miss Isha, you get nowhere. And that is what the presence of intelligence. That presence of intelligence which makes you who you are, makes the world what it is. Within uh, you and the world there is the search. The search has answers. Who provides those answers? You need help of Ishwara. You have a teacher, but your capacity to absorb from the teacher itself is restricted by your own infrastructure. Who helps you to expand that infrastructure? Ishwara. Grace of Ishwara. And it accompanies you all the way and ensures that grace accompanies you all the way and ensures that the very thing which is good for you, you don't get stuck there. Which is good for you, you don't get stuck. And it takes you all the way to the final discovery, which is what I and Isha are one. Isha Rasya And when that is done, the final goal of human life is what? Accomplished. The puzzle is solved. and solve forever. So, so I don't know both. You just, the, you are only manifesting as Ishwara and the awareness which is the truth. 
So as Ishwar, I think that company should not work. There is more desire called the last thing. So this is the whole thing. So what age uh, do you think one can be taught this teaching from? Hmm. This is a very good question. This is a very good question. This uh, a teaching, what is a, a see, there are so many different aspects of this in teaching. So the last verse is talking about what? It is coming back to what? The first, first verse. What is it exactly? The first verse is what? At least understand what? Two things. That there is dharma. Yeah. And that the that, that following of dharma is not just a matter of you know you being uh, responsible. It is a very important need. Because dharma is like a law. You can't say, I don't care whether there is law of gravity or not. If it is there, it is going to guide your life. And if you live your life oblivious to this law of gravity, what will happen? You will fall because you will have what? You will just walk anywhere and you will just not know the law of gravity. And you will. So that means dharma is not a matter of responsibility. It is a critical need for me to what? live my life intelligently and help what myself from what something. So that means this level can be taught at quite early. What Swamiji used to call it value of values. Every a value of values. So what happens is most of the time we are taught values as in form of rules. This is what you should do and this is what you should, should not do. And then we try to follow that to oblige whom? Whoever, parents, parents, teachers. We absolutely. We try to oblige everyone who our parents, our teachers, who taught us and things like that. What Swamiji said, as long as you think you are following the values to oblige others, the day comes very quickly when you will want sacrifice all those values. So if you really want to follow the value, you have to internalize what the value of value. Why is it important for me to follow those values? So where it says that any time you go in uh, against the natural program of the universe, the natural program of the universe is what? I know that I should not cheat you, I know that I should not lie, I know that I should not hurt. But through some confusion, if I go against it, then not only the other, I'm causing harm to the other person, but that what, ultimately what, comes back to me. So that, that is how the world is organized. It's organized, it's not whether I want it or not, this is how it is. So are you being what it is? So early means that this particular value of values can be taught, let's say, uh, to kids. Um, when I was talking to the kids of 8 to 12, they were understanding it fully. They were very smart. They, they could follow many, many things. 8, I think, is a good age. Nowadays, the kids are pretty smart. And then you build, and then you build. I could also say, sorry. No, I said when we introduced Natasha and Bill also was around that age. Around as well. that age, no? yeah. Yeah. So so the 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 yeah. But maybe now six, six, seven. No, it is five. Long. They go to class one. Okay. Yeah. So I have no idea. Because the age is understanding that age is dropping because. I have not tried, so I don't know. Why not as soon as you go to class? Sorry, which is what? Yes. Five is yes. class yes. one. Five. Go to class no, one. but that's what they started in India. No, but people four. are, people are okay. different. Different tools are here because see, their cognitive is not. I don't, I don't know, but I, I haven't 
So, yeah, the mode would be different. Yeah, might yeah. Have to yeah. Use, you have to use specific tools. Yeah, you need to use specific tools, you need yeah. to be trained to, you know. But just as we are talking, like our language, I think when I tried, 8 and 12, I was able to communicate. We all started with stories, we can't start with sending Exactly. Stories. That's what I'm saying. We started also saying with so we had a poem for That's why all the mythology, right? That's why all the mythology and then broken down into children's stories. You have a lot of that. To to take them even before, there are some of this Dalai Lama and some people, some psychologists who are like dealing with emotions. This aspect of teaching the kids even younger, so it means six, five, and so on. That you can be started at feel yeah. very early. Yeah. To make, not at the same language, yeah, same, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. this emotion, teach them that, yeah, there is an emotion there, so how to deal with that, name mm. the emotion, and so on. So yeah, that that's can the start. That's the purpose of the movie Vice Versa. In and out. Which one? Maybe in and out. English yeah, yeah, yeah. In and out. In and out. So what's yes. the purpose of the movie? No, inside out. Inside oh, out. Inside, inside out. out. What is the purpose of that? Okay, I will stop. Yeah, then we stop. can discuss. Yeah. Okay, so thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank